Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily, and I am standing in front of an amazing looking enclosure that I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about. Today, my good friend Chase came over. He produced this outdoor enclosure. I've been telling you about this for a number of weeks now. We're building an out, we built an outdoor enclosure for the albino and head albino olive python. Hopefully we can get them cold enough here and we can get them outside. We're gonna use the Tom Crutchfield method. They got plenty of room to move around. They can crawl, they can be snakes. You know, they can move around and that, that's important. And I think they're gonna look awesome out here. I can't wait to put them in the enclosure. We're, we're setting up some uh, tree branches. I gotta cut them down to size. Once those get done and we get all our Repta chip out, we're gonna fill the bottom of this enclosure with some Repta chip and we're gonna put these snakes in there and that's gonna look really cool. But you're gonna to wanna to hear how this was built. So guys, stay tuned. Plus we're gonna see a bunch of ball python clutches that have hatched out and shed in the incubator. Stay tuned on this Monday afternoon. All right, I wanna show you guys a really special project I've been teasing you guys about for quite a long time now. This is my good friend Chase and his son Connor. And Chase, we originally met, he came and bought a snake for me. And uh, you know, since then we've become friends. He's he goes bluefish, uh, blue, bluefin tuna fishing, brings me fish. I hook him up with supplements and he is an awesome carpenter. And Chase, you know, you built this other cage that I showed everyone that you brought over. I still haven't put anything in there yet, but right. I'm planning on something. And you and I have been brainstorming a outdoor enclosure for my olive pythons because we can't get these things to breed because it's too, it's, we can't get them cold enough inside. I want you to show, take everyone through this enclosure you built for me, step by step. All right. Well, we decided to, we built a mock draft that was pretty much a, yeah, replica, a replication of what is behind me. Right. Six inches by six inches tall by four inches wide. Uh, that turned into what you see behind me, where it's two enclosures that are six foot wide, six foot tall, and four feet deep. Conjoined, they make one entire enclosure that is 12 feet wide. And because I wanted to give them not only height, but I wanted to give them length too. Because yeah. you know these 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 olive pythons really like to climb around, right? And really, realistically, if you guys look at this, I we could theoretically I could put those croc monitors in here if I really wanted to. Uh, the problem is that there's when you open the when you open the uh, enclosure, they could get out. And whereas with snakes, they're not running out anywhere. Right. <laughs> Come over here this way, this, so I can oh, yeah. get you out of the sun here, yeah, no so people can see. All right, so. Let's, you want to open it up and yeah. show us like exactly so what you, you first of all I, I'm very impressed with the, the with the finish tell people how you got this finish and yeah. is that wood is it PVC explain to people so so for an outdoor enclosure uh, theoretically you want to use pressure treated lumber but because these are housing animals I didn't want to expose any animals to any foreign chemicals or pressure treating chemicals so I used uh, just a, a basic kiln dry, uh, kiln dried pine but then I covered everything with a Thompson's water sealer from head to toe, every crevice, everything is is glued with a tight bond exterior with glue. And uh, then once everything was water treated, I covered everything with an exterior uh, tan paint, um, a, weather, a weather guard paint. Then that was when the fun began. So I the weather guard paint basically prevents water from getting in there. It prevents water. It prevents mold. It prevents mildew. It protects the wood, so the water sh water will hit this and drain right off it. It won't get sucked into the wood. Mm -hmm. And so then, once it, once the first coat of paint was on, I flipped them over, and I used a uh, pom like basic palm fronds, like a Rika palm fronds. You can see that and that pattern. I used a gray paint um, and a green paint to spray past it to give the just a replication of a camo but but the more like a florida camo with the palm fronds so just and i did it on the inside as well just to give it some character that way it's not a basic just a one one color um enclosure so if we go so not only is this functional it's actually beautiful too <laughs> right and then also i decided to use a black vinyl coated hardware mesh uh if with this with the snakes in mind they will rub you know rub their nose and their head up against it so the black vinyl coated mesh protects their their skin or you know protects them from, from nose rubbing, rod and as opposed nose, to yeah. a, a non-coated metal can become very sharp for them mm. so and everything is is stapled down as it's tight i try to get as big openings as possible to you know for viewing yeah this is like my pool cage windows these are <laughs> like there's no brackets in the middle which is great so we open it. 
So this is the left side. Okay. Now explain what you got on the floor here. All right, so let's take a look at here. Let me put, let me lock, let me lock it so I don't go anywhere. So I told you you're gonna like this next part. Okay, so under this, I have the hardware mesh as well. So just in case, if this would be needed to come up, uh, it's still protected. So it's not going to, so no, no animal that's in here is ever gonna get out. Then I took some scrap uh, vinyl, uh, what is it they do the, you know, the vinyl uh, siding, siding material or gate, gate, you know, the, the vinyl fencing material. And I spaced it just enough to where all of these gaps, water goes right through. It's like a drain, so you can right. still put any type of bedding you want on here. This is the part you're going to like. <laughs> wow. You can hold that. It's pretty solid. You can stand in, inside your enclosure. Wow. To do whatever you want to do. You can put any type of tree branch. You can put a, you know, any type of water mm. container. The, uh, the casters on this thing are rated for 200 pounds a piece, so you, it doesn't matter what you so put on this. Really, with the, with, with, with the lizard, a big lizard, you could come in here and potentially shut the door. You know? Yeah, you could <laughs> kind of shut the door. Especially if it's white, if we open the divider. And, and here. Right, and speaking of the divider, so if you take a look at this, this is a uh, clear polycarbonate hurricane panel. So right now I have it pinched in between the two enclosures. So this creates two in separate enclosures. However, it can be removed, which I'll show you in a couple minutes. So the one, the other thing is we wanted a perch. We just wanted something to where they can be outside, still get airflow right. and not be in the heated area. So that's what this is, this is for. This, this framework is integrated into the enclosure. However, the panels that are not, the panels are removable. So if these were showed any type of wear and tear, Cleaning we can we I can unscrew them. We can pull them out. We can awesome. put a different material in. We could extend this out. We could do a whole bunch of different things. And mm -hmm. and I did that because over time, if this tends to wear out, we can replace it. That way, I didn't glue Very it cool. directly in. Now the other cool thing about this is, let's say you want to get your snake out, right. or you have a clutch in there. Right. Right. Ah, love it! Wow. There you go. Very so, smart. Now, up in here, this this has its own roof. It's insulated by the hurricane shutter, and it's got its own back panel. And this this is still protected by the hardware mesh, right. but it's got a it's got an eighth inch acrylic uh, sheet, and behind that acrylic sheet is flex watt heating. So we can so definitely got, get the heat from if it gets a little too cold. In the yeah, if it gets a little too cold, this is a flex watt heating panel. And I've got uh, the duct uh, thermal ducting tape behind it, so it won't get too hot. And I ran it all day long yesterday. And flex watt heating naturally does not get too hot, but you can always throw a thermal, you know, a, a, uh, uh, a temperature controller in right. here. But um, like I said, all of these panels are also changeable. So these, the we we could pop this out, we could pop the face off, we could change the way that this works. Yeah, where would you set up if you put a thermostat in here, just to? Um, I would put it right right in here and just either tape it down here or put a, a little bracket right here, something like that, yeah. and that will that'll regulate what what temperature is coming off of right. the the, uh, the flex watt heater. Because they the over here is going to be a little cooler, right. over here is going to be a little warmer. Right. So they can they can self regulate, but they also have the entire enclosure to. Right, and it only gets whatever. cold here like maybe a couple like a week or two out of the whole year. Anyway, right, where it's crazy. The olives actually like need to get cold too, and that's that was always the problem we had. So we'll probably start them off with the with the divider in there, and then we could just pull that out. And you made it pretty easy. All you have to do is unlatch these things, and these cages actually come apart too if, if we had to. So and then uh, I also did put uh, a clear polycarbonate roofing panel on top of it to add some extra waterproofing. Gotcha. So, so it's not going to rain like tremendously. So right here, this from here to here is all protected from rain and it extends out to the front. Oh, cool. So this still gets natural natural sunlight, right. natural airflow, but under here it's it is protected. It gotcha. is protected so it, they're not going to get full full force of rain right on top of them. Excellent. I love and it. And so here on see Connor. Dang it. And uh, one other thing I did with this is that all the access points are all lockable. So you can put a lock on all the on all the bolts yeah. or on the all the lat latches even the ones that hold the enclosure together cool. you can put a lock on it That's what we're gonna so do. that way you, you have some peace of mind that nobody that can just walk up and pop them open and go right now you know obviously thefts are thefts but this prevents yes right. a child or somebody right. from just simply 
opening it. Yes, and we don't want, and my son is definitely uh, the person right. to do that. <laughs> so this one, this enclosure is an identical mirrored it's image twin. of the next one. Mm -hmm. Now here's the, the cool thing. So when you're, all of Pythons are acclimated and you, you now you want to let them inter, introduce each other. Pop this out. Pop this out. Over a bit. He even has handles on, on the edge to, yeah. to, to move the enclosure. Ah, brilliant! And they have full full access to each other now. And these tighten. These tighten, so you can you can close the gap just by simply screwing this together a little bit, a little bit more. Right. I see. So especially when you have the when you have the divider out, you're going to want to tighten that up a little bit. So that's yeah. See, it. now it closes the gap. This is great. Now all we're going to do is add some branches to this so they can climb. Yep. And so. we're set to go. We got, I got news for you. We got plenty of, plenty of trees down right. from the yeah, hurricane. You even hurricane. brought some stuff over too. So, but, so we'll yeah, see. now, let's see. And so I can, now you have full, full access in between each enclosure. Same thing with... All the, all the high boxes too also will are, yep. are continuous. The high box are also wow. all the way through. Yeah, we that's have awesome. Access to both sides. That is so awesome. now this became a 12 foot watt long enclosure. Brilliant, beautiful. And, I got, it's it's yep. gorgeous this thing. I I, got, I I don't even know if the camera's capturing it as well as it really looks because this thing is just rock solid. It it is made of. This thing is going to take a hurricane category five to knock this thing down. That's well, ac sure. actually. Uh, before I put the hardware mesh on and before I put the last two coats of paint well at our shop we had two bay doors two 16 foot bay doors that broke in during one, hurricane yeah, yeah, yeah. during the hurricane one one ended up on our 67 firebird destroyed the firebird the other one ended up on this and this carried the oh bay no door. it didn't it didn't, didn't it didn't it didn't even scratch wow, it that's awesome. it didn't even scratch it very good so that's what I like to hear this is brilliant. I, I can't thank you enough for doing this for me. I mean, really, the two of us kind of brainstormed this. It was mostly your vision, but I kind of told you what I was looking for. And you, I, it's almost like you you were able to read my mind because this is exactly, exactly what I wanted. Perfect. I'm glad. Thank you. And you, no next time you guys see this, hopefully there'll be some olive pythons in this enclosure or something. All right, All right guys, I had to show you this update on this um, insane clutch we produced from uh, two weeks ago they shed out this here is a um, as you can see an Enchi banana clown two of them and they're both head pied so this was the um, banana clown head pied it was bred by the Enchi clown head pied and it's funny these we didn't hit the we didn't hit the visual pied on these we only hit the banana and she clown, but these might be the nicest ones in the entire clutch. It's it's crazy. I don't know if this camera's even picking up how beautiful these things are. These are just exquisite looking. Probably the nicest banana and she clowns I've seen. I don't know why they're so really, really vibrant and clean, but they are. And super happy with these. They're gonna be hard to let go. I know I can't keep everything, but look at that. What a beautiful snake. It's funny, this one actually looks like it actually has a ringer on its head. I don't know if you'd call that a paradox or if it just literally has a pied ringer on its head. That's pretty weird, right? <laughs> I've, never seen, I've never seen that. It almost looks like a scaleless head, but it's obviously not. But just saying, it just look, looks like it. All right, these are the uh, th our three visuals we got. This is a, what I, this is a clown pied. This one is a, Clown pied as well. This one's lighter though. This one almost looks Enchi clown pied, but I don't think it is. It's just like a, a higher white pied. And then this was our stunner. Still looks stunning. This is our banana Enchi. Excuse me, banana clown pied. No Enchi in that. That's banana clown pied. That's our, our double recessive with the banana gene. These were just double recessives without the banana gene. 
I mean, we hit really good odds. Everything was going to be clown in this clutch because both parents were clown, but really, we only had a 25% chance of hitting a pies, and we hit three pies out of five eggs. That's pretty good. That's good. That's better than 50%, and we were only supposed to get 25%. So sometimes, you know, it pays off. Sometimes you do. The odds gods are with you. Beautiful clutch. All right, here's a little update from the Mandarin pie project. So these, these were Mandarin pies we produced. Very black heads they have. That's typical for Mandarin pies. Uh, some really nice coloring here. That's a Mandarin pie. So we got two Mandarin pies. They're both head albino too. So this was a really good clutch as well. I've showed you these before. I just want to give you a little update on these. Uh, post shed, they're going to be going into their enclosures this uh, week and be eating for the first time. Once again, I usually let mine go a couple, like two weeks uh, after they shed. They usually shed the first week and then I wait a week and then they eat. So, two manner of pies, head albino. And we're going to show you another little highlight from another clutch we had. Uh, the two best. This was a high intensity orange dream fire clown bred to a pastel pinstripe disco het clown. And I was been trying to hit this for a number of years. Actually, we hit it last year, but not the way I wanted to. I believe this to be a high intensity orange dream pastel clown. And this one is a, definitely we hit the disco inferno. So that's a disco fire. I think it's high intensity orange dream clown. So it looks like a clown pie, but it's not because the Disco Inferno gives it that white look to it. And I'm, I'm pretty, I don't, this could be pinstripe in here too. I'm not sure though. Probably should put this under a black light. Very interesting though, because like I said, these Disco Infernos look like pies. So this, this, um, this is definitely a visual clown. So that's a Disco Inferno. Might be high intensity orange dream pastel clown. I don't know. It's possible. It's almost erased all its pattern. So, it's really nice looking. Black eyes, black eyes tell me clown right there. So, beautiful. All right, we have a runaway. I gotta get this runaway. Runaway, runaway! Look at how beautiful that guy is. These two really came out nice. This was probably, my, these might be like my two nicest clowns I produced this year. Or maybe not the nicest, but definitely, definitely up there. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. I have to thank my good friend Chase for building these amazing enclosures. Man, did he do a top-notch job. These are just beyond my wildest expectations. You know, when I was visualizing what I wanted out here, this was it. It's amazing that someone who's that talented who can capture my vision for what I wanted with his talented hands and make exactly what I was looking for. These are just top notch and you know what i'm going to have them build me some indoor enclosures for my albino water monitors uh, as they get older as well because i really you know i want to have good display stuff they can't go outside um i don't want to lose them but yeah i'm going to have them build some cool stuff inside with some banks of you know basking lights and everything we're going to do some really cool stuff uh, i'm so happy you know that uh, i was able to get this made i think this might be the key to getting the albino olive pythons to breed this season hopefully if it isn't We'll try again the next year. That's always what it is. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. That's the, the name of the game. You know what he told me? He's, it was two gallons of glue he used on this enclosure. Two gallons. Can you imagine that? Two gallons of glue to hold this thing together. I, I'm going to give you the whole inventory list. He's going to make me an inventory list. because When he was telling me what he was using, I'm like, holy mackerel. That is insane. Anyway, I want to, once again, huge shout out to Chase. And uh, I'll put his uh, Instagram in the description below because uh, if you guys ever want to reach out to him and ask him ideas, he's a, an amazing, amazing construction. Um, I call him a creative uh, a creative construction guy because he isn't just good at doing standard stuff. He is able to take his visions of what maybe has never been done before and really translate it into reality. And that's a special gift. All right, guys, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. Hit that like button. I'll see you back again tomorrow morning.